Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is my review of the Microsoft Lumia 950 and the 950 XL. So I've had both of these phones for about a month, the XL a little bit longer. And in the beginning, I had some pretty lukewarm thoughts about these phones, but I've been using the XL as my daily driver since I've gotten it. Here's my review. Now both of them come in simple cardboard boxes that kind of look like Surface devices. You slide them open and you get the phones, pamphlets, USB-C chargers, and USB type A to type C cable. Both of them are polycarbonate phones and they have very similar builds. They remind me of the Nexus 5X, so they're really good for a plastic phone, but it's still a plastic phone and the material flexes and creaks a little bit when you squeeze it. But they both feel durable and the texture is nice. I actually like polycarbonate phones because they often have removable backs and they're usually less expensive, but the Lumias are not cheap. The 950 costs $550 and the 950 XL comes in at $650. So even though the build quality is good, they're priced a little bit higher than your average polycarbonate phone. The design is simple and clean and I really like the Windows logo on the back, but I think a lot of people will find it a little bit boring. Something to note, I've put the white 950 XL in the pocket of my jeans almost every day for the past month and there's no blue stains, so that's good. Now going around the phone, there's a USB-C port at the bottom, volume rocker, power switch, and the camera button on the right, and headphone jack up top. So the back cover on the 950 juts out a little bit, but the back cover on the 950 XL is flush right against the screen. And it's actually a very noticeable difference in feel when you're holding the two. So that ledge and the smaller size of the 950 make it a lot easier to hold. So the covers of both of them come off pretty easily. And on the inside, you have a removable battery, a micro SD slot, and two SIM card slots. One of the SIM card slots is hidden behind the battery. The back cover also has the sticker things for wireless charging and NFC. So the mics on these phones are very impressive. They use something called HAAC rich audio and they record audio really clean. So your voice calls sound really good. But despite having these really great mics, the speakers on the back of these phones are pretty bad. They get loud, but they're tinny and they're not stereo. And worst of all, they project away from you. So when you're watching stuff on your phone, it's not a great experience. The earpiece up front is also really clear. It's got noticeable better call quality than my iPhone 6S and my 6P. So call quality is a thing that you kind of take for granted, but both of these Lumia phones really nail it. They both have an AMOLED Quad HD display, so that's 2560 by 1440. The 950 has a 5.2 inch screen with Gorilla Glass 3, and the 950 XL has a 5.7 inch screen with Gorilla Glass 4. They're both incredibly high resolution and really sharp, but on the same display settings, colors on the 950 look a little dull in comparison, but at the same time warmer. Uh, they're both really good screens though. They are AMOLED panels, so the black levels are really nice and deep. Viewing angles are good, contrast is also really good, and the screens can get very bright. But there is a weird issue. So the screen needs to be on automatic brightness to get really bright. And if you have it on manual, even at max setting, it's not easy to see in sunlight. But when you have it on automatic and in sunlight, the screen gets super bright. So I think this is something that they should fix with the software update. On the top of the display is an iris scanner that it uses for a Microsoft Hello. So the idea of iris recognition sounds really badass, but it doesn't work well. It drains batteries quickly and it fails a lot, like maybe 30% of the time it wouldn't work. Now, it's a feature that's technically in beta and I know it'll improve over time, but it'll always be slow because no matter how fast your camera is or how fast the processing is, you have to bring it up to your face to make it work, right? And a fingerprint sensor can unlock the instant that you hold it. So I don't think this tech gives any benefits over a fingerprint sensor. They're both running Windows 10 Mobile and on the surface, it actually looks a little similar to Windows 8.1 Mobile, but there's way more customizability than before. Everything from tile transparency, color temperatures, to linking tiles, like there's lots of cool features that 8.1 didn't have. And Cortana runs really well on the devices, but man, this thing has a lot of bugs. So I've had two system updates since I've been using the 950 XL and it gets noticeably better each time, but it still crashes in apps and crashes in voice calls. It'll smoothen out over time, but it's weird to me that a device like this, of this caliber, launched out of the door with software like this. There's also that ever-present app gap that everyone's aware of. Lots of popular and important apps still aren't available on Windows Phone. It's frustrating and even crippling for some users, but I think this is something that will change pretty soon because Microsoft's been developing software that would essentially let iOS and Android developers convert their existing projects into Visual Studio projects. We'll have to see. Both of these phones can use a feature called Continuum, and in my opinion, this is the most unique feature of these phones. The idea is that you can connect a Lumia 950 or a 950 XL to a large screen to use the phone for light computing tasks. 
So you can connect it wirelessly with an HDMI dongle, or if you wanna do it legit, you can pick up this $100 display dock, which is connected to a monitor. Now, it doesn't turn your phone into a computer, which is kinda of how it looks like in promotional materials. It basically gives your phone just like a big screen and the ability to connect to peripherals like keyboards and mice. There's no split screen, there's no real multitasking. And the month that I've used it, I found it moderately useful because a lot of the apps I need are missing, but there are days when I literally come into work and do nothing except for emails, Excel, and make phone calls for eight hours. And on a day like that, the 950 XL with Continuum could handle it no problem, but I already bring a laptop to work and it just takes up less space than all of these little peripherals combined. So I'm not sure how useful it is for most people right now. Now, over the course of 2016, as developers put in the time to make more compatible apps, it's going to become more useful, but as it stands, it's kind of a novelty feature. Now, something I noticed, the phones actually get pretty warm when they're docked for Continuum, and the performance of Continuum is better on the 950 XL over the 950. It's not like a gigantic difference or anything, but you'll notice it when you have multiple things open. We've seen the processors in these phones a dozen times and they're very strong performers, especially the Snapdragon 810 in the 950 XL. And this time it has liquid cooling to keep temperatures down. So you're gonna see even less throttling than before. Games run well on both devices. Nothing seems particularly laggy in Windows 10 Mobile, but when you compare it to a Nexus 6P and a 5X, which run the same processors, the Nexus devices feel just a little bit snappier, but software updates will probably speed things up for the Windows phones. Both of these Lumias have the same f1.9 20 megapixel camera, and it's excellent. The thing is, a lot of the flagship smartphones right now take incredible photos, but I actually think the cameras on the 950 and the 950 XL might be the best. It's tough to call a winner, but I actually think it takes the image quality crown, mostly because of how good the low light shots are. So daylight photos are excellent, but these nighttime shots are surprisingly good. And if you're big on manual controls, the camera software is really detailed. The one downside to this camera though, is that it's a little slow. So loading up the app, taking pictures, focusing, everything feels a little slow in comparison to like an iPhone 6S or a Nexus 6P. The videos are also really good, but there's no video editing software on the phone and apps once again are very limited. The battery life is okay. So for the 950 and the 950 XL, you can get through a day if you're using it really lightly, but I had to charge it up in the afternoon most days. I also noticed heavy battery drain when idling. So if you sleep for eight hours, you wake up and it's dropped like 15 to 20%. And in comparison, my Nexus 6P or an iPhone 6S, those will lose like two to 3% overnight. I know it's a software thing and it's gonna get fixed, but it's still annoying right now. All right, Lumia 950 and 950 XL. Both of them have polycarbonate bodies, well-built, but a little bit creaky. Excellent call quality from the earpiece. Both of them have really nice quad HD AMOLED screens, but they need to be on automatic brightness to get really bright. They both have iris scanners up front that are kind of slow and unreliable. They both have five megapixel front facing cameras that are decent. On the back, they both have the same 20 megapixel camera that takes some of the best images of smartphone cameras right now. They also both have rear facing speakers that are loud, but tinny. On the inside, we have batteries that currently only last about a day of light use. They have a Snapdragon 808 or an 810, both of them which have three gigs of RAM, and they should be strong performers, but they're a little sluggish because of software issues right now. And they both have double SIM card slots and 32 gigs of expandable storage. Okay, so aside from that iris scanner and the speakers, I would consider the hardware on these phones really solid, but because of how expensive these phones are and how limited the apps are, but most importantly, how buggy Windows 10 Mobile is right now, it's really difficult for me to recommend this phone to anyone. If you're an existing Windows phone user, I would probably just use what you're using right now. Just hold out a little bit longer. If you're an iOS or an Android user, there's really no compelling reason to switch over to this ecosystem, not currently. Now, Continuum is super cool. I think what Microsoft is trying to do has massive potential. And over time, as everything kind of matures, I think it can actually replace place computers for certain users. And that's what this whole system needs. It needs to mature, like the OS needs to mature, the app store needs to mature, and universal apps need to become more readily available. And I think they will be by the middle of 2016. And that's also when Microsoft plans on releasing their Surface phones. Those will be better built, and the software will kind of be ripened up for that hardware by then. I would totally wait for those. That's the end of this review. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you did, subs if you loved it. It's been nice, and I'll see you guys next time.